What's up guys, it's Arathon again. Today we will be playing through the third challenge quest that released for the current event of Kabuki Cho Night Festival. So it looks like it is a level 80 quest with some objective that I cannot read as usual in a large map featuring 4 star sphinx as well as 5 rates. So this is probably a single phase quest. Now my best guess for what this could be since it has a question mark at the end is it's another riddle of some sort. Presuming it's a riddle that you can't just blow up super easily again, which I really hope it isn't. It is a large map so maybe we should just do what we did before. I have a feeling that it's gonna be a callback to the very first challenge quest because the composition did look very similar between uh, the five or four different rates plus a sphinx. I believe the first challenge quest was also a large map in a single phase. I probably should just double down as usual for these quests since that seems to be perfectly sufficient, but I am gonna go hedge my bet on it being a natural riddle that he can't just cheese, so I think I'm just gonna attempt to do the same strategy from before, except instead of bringing Sasaki, I'll just make someone useful. And as for my instant farrier, I guess I'll be using Sandayu again, but I'll have a uh, boogeyman to help him get his full range on turn one. Not that he's any more useful than Stog, but whatever. Since we'll be moving a good bit, might as well bring Shalotl. This is maybe fine. Let's give this a go. Okay. Alright, so they did start pretty much as far as they could. So I'm somewhat glad I brought all these uh, movement enhancers. And we didn't get pulled by... Uh, okay, Boogeyman's officially useless. So everyone has this debuff. I don't know what it is. But it seems to be inflicted by themselves since it's level 80. I have no idea what this riddle could be referring to though. To play it. Wait, 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 wait. Everyone changed weapon types. And I don't know, it's because I was mostly just <laughs> looking at Santa Yu. But yeah, he has weapon change shot. No one is resistant to weapon change, so uh, this should all be telling for something. Now, what could this tell us? Do we have to hit them all at the same time or something? I feel like that might be the case. Unfortunately, Boogeyman didn't do. I, I thought it was guaranteed, was it not? His, like, phase one pull. <sighs> Whatever, I don't want to risk hitting anyone, I don't have to, so I'm just gonna move over here. Yeah, this looks like the right thing, and we got hit because we didn't manage to... Limit the on turn one, okay, very cool. This is 100% Boogeyman's fault. Imagine failing a 90% rate on turn one. On arrival skills failing should be completely <laughs> removed from this game. <laughs> Why does Ryota have nullify buff only at 80%? Why does Boogeyman not have his pull guaranteed? Okay, I already knew what we're supposed to do just from this riddle. I already solved it, I think. Anyways, that was idiotic. Fuck it, let's bring Sasagwa. And then Boogeyman will pull now. Just watch. Oh, he failed again. Okay, he a piece of shit, sure. But I brought Sasago this time, so fuck you. Well, I could have reached everyone anyways at this point. But yeah, I think I have an idea of what to do. I just need to hit everyone with long slash range. Uh, that is within long slash range. And hit everyone that is otherwise inaccessible with shot. So this can be done by doing this. And it looked like from our first attempt that if, as long as you hit the right unit, then they won't attack in the next turn. Yeah, see? Fucking boogeyman piece of shit. I thought it was obvious, but I couldn't even answer it because fucking turn one positioning sucks ass! Uh, yeah, this is definitely the way to do this thing. I forgot who I was moving for a second. I was like, what was the shot? Alright, we're good. Oh, we're supposed to miss. Interesting. Did we receive a skill that makes us resistant to pulls? We might have actually. Yeah, there's a l two level 80 ones. The other one was just weapon change. The other one might be making us resistant to pulls. Okay, if that's the case, I'm sorry, Pokemon. I didn't mean what I said. But if not, then you're still a piece of shit. Alright, let's just do this. Oh, you played enough dungeons to know how to dodge. Wait, was that not what we were supposed to do? <laughs> okay. Okay, I think we're supposed to hit everyone. Not this. <laughs> okay, talk about overkill. Calm down. 
ここで忘れるな私はやめのかあお This is a fair! Yeah, okay, so it's a board right from here on. Can't really do anything about it. You know, I, it would have been obvious I was supposed to hit them all, but I was thinking of the first challenge quest's mechanics, where you're supposed to match the weapon type or something like that. But <laughs> there's nothing like that here. You're just supposed to hit them. There was nothing in res with respect to trying to、uh, match their weapon type, only trying to hit them. Uh, okay, you know what? I'm not wasting my time seeing all those special effects. Let's just get, <laughs> leave <laughs> and redo this. So, on turn three, we need to hit everyone. Now, I could bring Teen Delos to achieve that, but I still need to have someone with extend movement. And I feel like Buggy Man might not be failing because they might have made us resistant to pulls. But that would be extremely idiotic, but that might actually be the case. So let's just keep on bringing Sothagwa and try to clear this with our natural weapon range. Now, I do believe, actually, the weapon change is only for a regular weapon, so I might be good to bring Christine since she'll have a weapon change all. Okay, let's give this one more go. Now, this quest would be pretty impossible for someone who never learned how to ferry in this game. Like, we take it for granted to ferry units left and right with other units, but they never explicitly tell you to do that in this game, or even explain that you can, so. I'm sure some people have gotten by by just moving the units they want across the board just by, you know, moving them one by one. I have no idea how large that extend movement range is for everyone, but I'm gonna assume it's for the entire board.、Uh, so, no matter what, Shalala should be able to move around, even if it's one square only, since he's in dead center. I'm channeling my dungeon experience here by seeing how he can hit everyone. So, if you want to make the most range or use out of the thrust range, it had have to be the fourth column. Even though it looks most attractive to do the magic range there. I do think、uh, the blue range is a red herring, though, since it can't really do anything that any other comp can't. Oh, wait! It might actually be useful. Oh, <laughs> this is kind of complicated, but I see the solution. You actually do need to use blue range here. Okay, this one's pretty clever, actually. Instead of verbally explaining it to you, I'll just demonstrate by moving. There you go. I got him! Hey, there you go. Thank you for not doing anything, Boogeyman. But I actually do think that uh,、um, this quest was actually pretty interesting. But as a first clear, I think it was、uh, quite fun. <laughs> I do think they made us resistant to movement pushes just because maybe some units have native pushes that may be disadvantageous, such as、uh, with Naja. Maybe they made us resistant to combo too, but. I don't know.、Um, I can see the reasoning behind it though. So, everyone here essentially was just <laughs> picked for no reason since you could have brought literally any unit,、um, which is a shame, but also it's fun to play by the rules properly in this one.、Uh, unfortunately, Sasako is not relevant because I have a feeling that that movement change、uh, actually maximally made everyone move as far as Sasako, but I'm too lazy to double check that. <laughs> Anyways,、uh, that's it for this clear. Bring that ticket. There it is.